It's time for Eric Plays Multiplayer Civ 6. Hey guys, how's it going? Once again, shout out to... Oh, I can't make that work. Sorry. <laughs> Sean Gibson. Alright, let's... Uh, this time we've got a, quite a few games to play. Alright, so we got Code of Laws. Oh, I should have checked those policies. Oh, very good. Uh, change policies. Um... Let's do Barbarians and Production. That seems a good start to our game. Alright. Uh, versus. Yeah, okay. Cool. All right, let's see what I've got going on in my queue over here. All right, I've got a scout. Let's do a settler. Settler first, then scout. Then monument, then warrior. Then builder. Then settler, then warrior. All right, that's pretty good. Foreign trade lets me go traders. Excellent. Definitely want that. Need some orders. Look at all that salt on the floor there. Someone was messy. All right. I will just have this guy chill here in case anybody decides to get fresh with me. Okay, save that game. You're killing me, Smalls. All right, load that up. sure if I've um, spoken about Temeriere yet. Um, that's a, uh, I want to say Naomi Novak. Novak. I'm bad with names, but it's a, uh, a historical fantasy where um, where in the Napoleonic, Napoleonic age um, all the different countries have dragons um, which basically transports um air battles from world war one back about two or three generations i think um maybe not even that many um might just be one or two generations um and i am enjoying the f out of that book like i did not think i was gonna find it anywhere near so interesting i think because she decided to make the dragons intelligent um they're not pets they're not like dogs they're not just you know conveyances they have real personality all right look at that my territory stretches across this little inlet here um all right what have i got going on here Uh, it's that thing where it keeps not letting me click anything because of Windows. Windows is bullshit. God, mother. There we go. All right. I've got a builder going on. Which will guess something. Rice, I guess. Since it's not telling me I need irrigation. Um, ooh, nice. Requires mining. Okay, well, we'll have mining pretty soon. All right, so that's good. We'll do a builder. Do another warrior. Warrior, scout, settler, monument. All right, so that takes care of the queue for a bit. All right, we'll keep this warrior here in case anyone comes by. Alright, let's save that game. <coughs> I 
so I started off reading it and I was like, all right, this is kind of cool. This is kind of neat. You know, I like historical fiction and, you know, even though this isn't steampunk, you know, I've enjoyed steampunk, which is, you know, maybe a little bit after this time period. And I've enjoyed um, this series that has um, this, it's, uh, I want to say Madame St. Elm, which is a real person and they've, fictionalized her life and added some paranormal stuff to it and so that was kind of cool so that, i mean you know i'm gonna but then all of a sudden it just reaches this point where i've just been like oh my god this book is so good and i'm like reading and i'm staying up till midnight when i should be sleeping and i'm getting like really tired the next day and just like uh um and uh um i'm at like 70 percent uh can't wait to finish that book um oh, excuse me um, I'm also reading Wild Cards Book 2. Um, so I liked the first one. Again, I like historical fiction. This one, the first one taking place from the 40s to the 80s, which at the time the book was written was the present. Um, and uh, so I'm reading the second book. So it's an anthology series. Uh, George R. R. Martin lends his name to it, which gets people to buy it, but he doesn't really write in it. He's just the editor. Which is not, I mean, not to say, oh, he's just the editor, but you know, it's not like he's writing in it. Uh, but uh, let's see here. Let's go here. Um, so the first book. Um, was interesting and kind of like had a bunch of um, unconnected stories, but everyone's kind of playing in the same universe. It's kind of like a giant D&D &D campaign. Actually, it started as a giant D&D &D campaign that turned into this book series. And um, the second book, on the other hand, is mostly jumping back and forth between these two connected stories, like part one, part two, and so on and so forth, with a couple... So far, just a couple other stories thrown in that are adding a little more to it. From I'm, humble beginnings, you have... I'm really liking that book, too. Um, that's the one that I read just five minutes at a time while I'm um, while I'm eating my lunch. Um, just because I find it hard, hard to type while I'm eating. So I can kind of read a little bit and then get right back to work. So that's slow going, but I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, and then the trend I've been doing for this year is two, two to three fiction books and then a cookbook. The cookbook I started reading now is called Huckleberry. It's basically like a morning bakery book um, with baked goods and savory dishes. Um, I just started it. Um, it took 33 pages to get to the first set of recipes because there's a lot of introduction, but I like the introductions a lot because they kind of give you the, the philosophy grit enough to behind um, the way they do the recipes and what they mean when they say to a pinch and all that type of stuff. So that's good. All right, I found Nanmodal. They want a trade route. Right now, I just gotta make sure my trade route isn't just destroyed instantaneously by the bad guys. Ah, that's a bummer. All right, um, Archer, let's heal up. You know what? Sure. Let him be stronger while he's here. All right, let's do some astrology so we can get a religion. I'm gonna go next turn. So even though I'm not a huge consumer of like pastries and cakes and stuff like that, um, they're pretty fun to make. And Danielle does eat them and I can take them to work and stuff, so. So I'm kind of excited about the aspect of the, of the book. 
plus it can be fun to uh you know those things even if you can't have them often it's fun to have them here and there um the kids like them and the kids are still at that age where they can eat whatever the heck they want and they don't get any weight so um they've been helping me devour my bread i've been making one to two bread recipes every weekend and the kids have just been like arr, 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 which is good um it's funny, I used to be so, so into bread. Like, growing up, we had bread with every meal, even if we already had another starch. I don't underrate the value of military knowledge, but if men make war in slavish obedience to rules, they will fail. So they just started building. What's this here? A campus, all right, cool. Do down in poetry. Alright. Dave's over here in this peninsula. He's got about four cities. I'm over here. We're both kind of stuck in a way, unless we start going this way. Um... Because uh, you have these cities so close together, you're not going to be able to <coughs> make as many districts. Um. Probably going to end up having to go after Cleopatra. Because I'm not going to be able to get anything really done in that desert area there. Save that game. Submit that file. Alright. Oops. I clicked on the wrong thing there. You have built great cities of stone and seen early empires rise and fall. Soon you will stand under the towering pinnacles of castles alongside your gallant knights. That is where the story of your people will be written. Just as the young apprentice learned to carry a sword, so shall you grow to understand your place in this world. Queen Sandu, the stars reveal you lead career to greatness. Build Seum to educate your people, for the secrets of the world are theirs to uncover. For those who would steal your knowledge, treat them to a rain of rocket-propelled fire. Alright. Alright. So where I want to attack the Chinese. Let's uh, bring this guy over here. Doesn't look like they have walls yet, which is good for me. Especially since I have archers. Found Yerevan, good for me. So anyway, that's where I'm at with books. Um, I don't watch a lot of TV. Um, because I don't have a lot of time. Usually, we've got about half an hour every night to watch TV. If we're going to watch any. And so, you know, I go very slowly. Usually my wife is way ahead of me in episodes. Because she can watch them while she does the dishes or while she's on the treadmill. Um, <clears throat> right now, I'm very early on in um, Counterpart, Season 2. I think I'm on Episode 4. 
Um, I think I heard they did not get renewed for the third season, which, I mean, could suck if they didn't have the room they needed to tell their story, if they didn't, you know, learn that early enough. But it can be pretty good because it's not going to drag on and just um, ruin itself, you know? That happens all too often. Okie dokie. Alright, Los Angeles. Let's go to Los Angeles because we haven't built a trading post there yet. And out of curiosity, I because I forget. Where does a trading post get you? Trading post. Oh, that's cool. So it allows me to go further. Neat. And if it's a uh, another nation city, then it's more valuable to me. I like that. Gotcha, sucker. Go get me some money. Oh man, it's probably gonna regenerate. All right, let's go that way. <coughs> some very lost elephants over there. All right, somebody built the Oracle. Got a trading post. Catherine and Gorgo. Let's see, Catherine. Now we're gonna open visitors. Go, girl. Uh, okay. Sh sure. I think that. Uh, Playing multiplayer makes me want to be more aggressive than naturally. Although, any of you guys that have been watching my channel for a while have seen me slowly grow out of being a turtle, and you, you guys didn't get to see me back in the days of Civ 3 and 4 where I only turtled. I would just always go for a score or a science victory. Um, but I, I feel like when I'm playing these multiplayer games, if you're not using your units, then you're not doing you're just loading the game to hit next turn to get out of it and it takes too long for that so i think that i end up being more aggressive in these games because it gives me something to do rather than just load this up and then um and then say oh well click and plus it's not fun for you if you're watching the let's play either And for me, I've basically got two purposes for the Let's Play. One is to share with my brothers, although in this case I have to be playing with them. And the other is um, to raise money for Extra Life. Neither one is likely to happen if people are bored. Yes, that's what I need. That's... I think it was attacking me, but I'm not sure. All right, let's see here. Let's get you over there. You over here. Okay, skip your turn, I guess. Let's get you here. Yes, ranged attack defense. Let's get you closer. <coughs> no one for him to attack, I guess. Why not just build up the uh, hit points, I guess. Samurai have these weird, like, King Triton logo. It's very weird. Hey, I escaped, I guess? That's awesome. Uh-oh. Less awesome. Very much less awesome. All right. Uh, 
Run away. Alright, uh. Wonder if I can sue for peace. We'll see what Dave says. He may or may not. After what happened in the China game. <laughs> Alright, save that game. Alright, last one, the one that's just Dan and I. Let's see if I can take the Chinese city, although it's gonna be a lot harder now that it's got a wall. Err, walls. Maybe I've got enough money to buy um batting ram or something. <coughs> From humble beginnings you have shown remarkable growth. Leave your bronze for iron and rule with horse and sword. The sky above begins to reveal its secrets, a collection of heaven that uplifts our hearts and guides us to foreign shores. Much rests upon your shoulders, King Gilgamesh. Your own people and many people of the world look to you as a leader. But you are more than a mere man and the weight of the world will never cause you to waver. Encourage the people of Sumer to settle the fertile land. Here we go. Boom, 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 boom. Move you over. Move you over. Get you there. go nice freaking wall taking forever all right let's heal up for a minute uh i've got 500 bucks is that enough to buy a battering ram i don't know it is nice all right. Why don't you? Yeah, why not? Okay. Ooh, another one. Nice. So many war cards. No deals. Hey, like this guy's got like a basket of apples or some crap. Hey, who's over here? I wonder if it's Dan. All right, worry about that later. It's bluish, not greenish. So I think this is the end. At least, at the very least, I'll control their capital. Save that game. Alright, this has been Eric playing Civ 6 multiplayer. I'll see you next time. Bye.